Good morning, Shamrocks. My name is Jimmy Maloney, class of 2025. Today is Wednesday, May 8th. Let us remember we are in the holy presence of God, the Father, the Holy Spirit. Amen. I will praise you, Lord, among the nations. I will tell you of your name to my kin. Alleluia. St. John got this steal a sale. Pray for us. Blessed Brother James Miller, pray for us. Live Jesus in our hearts forever. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning, Shamrocks. Welcome to your Gold Day News for Wednesday, May 8th. I'm Connor Mazurkowitz. And I'm Julian Torres, and here are today's announcements. Basketball informational meeting. There will be an organizational meeting for any student interested in playing basketball next year, today, May 7th, at 3 p.m. in the gym. The meeting will cover summer camps, summer leagues, summer tournaments, and camp counselor job opportunities. Any questions, please see Coach Bailey. There will be Wednesday morning mass in the chapel at 8 a.m. Anyone interested in attending can join us in the chapel. Who wants all their service hours done for next year before the school year even starts? Then consider being a camp invention intern leader this summer from July 29th to August 2nd. A STEM camp for K through 6 kids needs group leaders to help out during the camp day from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. Contact Ms. B in 308 for more details. Special lunch provided by the Moms Club on Wednesday, May 8th. There will be a hot dog lunch in the courtyard, sponsored by the Moms Club during all lunches. If anyone does not want a hot dog for lunch, they will need to bring a lunch from home. There will be no cafeteria service that day. Why do all hot dogs look alike? Why? Because they are all in bread. <laughs> Here comes the money! Here comes the money! Money, 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 money! <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever wanted to become a beekeeper? This Wednesday and the following Wednesday, May 8th and May 15th, Ms. O'Sullivan, Ms. Morocco, and Ms. Burkler will be holding an informational meeting on the new beekeepers club. It will be held at 8.15 a.m. before school. During the meeting, we will go over the basics and everything that the club will be all about. In the summer of 1861, the Reverend Dennis Doon, pastor of St. Patrick's Parish in Chicago, summoned the help of the Christian Brothers. The Christian Brothers, loyal sons of St. John Baptiste de La Salle and committed to Christian education, were called to take control of the faltering St. Patrick Parish. The upheaval of the Civil War was rippling throughout the nation. Brother Canadian led a trio of Christian Brothers in Chicago's West Side Parish. Walking into the humble frame building, the four men immediately set to work. A congregation dominated by Irish people, the St. Patrick's School needed stability following the departure of the Brothers of Holy Cross, a name of a school briefly occupying the same spot. 
The Christian brothers were a good influence on the children in the neighborhood and profusely encouraged them to join the school. I doubt the brothers were aware of the great legacy they were building. St. Pat's history is almost as old as Chicago. Founded in 1846 as Chicago's second Roman Catholic parish, the original St. Patrick's Church consists of a modest frame structure on Randolph and Des Plaines. This was primarily for the Irish population. Though the Christian brothers were French and German, the area was almost completely dominated by Irish people. Surprisingly few cared about this and most parents just wanted their children to be educated. Many of the children's parents were illiterate or laborers, so they just wanted the chance that they did not have to experience. While Brother Ken Didion would leave for Baltimore in 1868, Brother William would inherit the top posts, overseeing the school's role during one of the city's most damaging crises. In 1871, the Chicago Fire burnt down many buildings in the city due to most of them being made out of wood, crippling the city and many of its residents. This fire was merely two blocks away from St. Pat's. After this, the school was briefly turned into a hospital health and relief center for a few months. On January 5, 1872, the school reopened its doors. By 1874, the old school could not hold the number of students enrolled, so they decided to make a new one. In consultation with Reverend P.J. Conway, the parish pastor, and the brothers oversaw the construction of a four-story brick structure. It was completed in 1875 and only cost $24,000. This was the tallest building west of the river at the time. 23 graduates earned their diploma during the Academy's 1912 commencement ceremony at the city's historic Blackstone Theater. St. Patrick Parish Pastor William J. McNamee addressed the graduates, knowing the school's thorough commercial education. It becomes a big thing early on. Go to St. Pat's, graduate, and they'll find you a job. The old boys of this grand old school are found to be occupying prominent positions in the religious, judicial, political, professional, business, and social life of this great city and country, McNamee said, a nod to the Academy's success. On June 23, 1926, St. Patrick's joined with fellow Christian Brothers schools St. Mel and De La Salle Institute, as well as 20 other Catholic high school students, in ceremonies at Soldier Field for Higher Education Day at the Eucharistic Congress. At the Mass, students listened to sermons from cardinals and religious hierarchy throughout the world. The presence of academy students at the event highlighted St. Patrick's roots as a devoted Catholic institution. A 2nd, 1952, the school announced they would be moving. St. Patrick Academy would be leaving its spot at the Splains and Adams and would take up a new spot on Belmont and Austin Avenues. This was a difficult decision for the brothers, but they knew it was the right one. Before they moved to the new building, the students served 1952 to 1953 school year at St. Mel's so its history could go on uninterrupted. In May 1953, the new and improved St. Patrick High School opened up its doors for the very first time. Nearly 150 years later, we're still doing what we've always done and doing it pretty well in the light of the changes happening around us. Coach Luke, what was Pat's like the first time you came here? Uh, 1977. It was uh, a pretty special place. So there were about 13, 1400 uh, men here. Uh, the Christian brothers were much more present. There were a lot of Christian brothers here. Uh, they were very influential in everything that happened here at school. It was really kind of a cool place. They would wear their black, walk down the halls. It was really cool. The way they kind of took over the, the school, uh, they certainly ran the school. Um, they, they molded young men, I mean, for real. I mean, that, they used to call us brothers boys because when you came here, you really felt like you were being raised by the brothers, too. Brother David, what was Pat's like when you first came here? I came here in 1971, and when I came here, this was a very big school. We had almost 1,600 kids here, uh, so it was quite different than it was today. Uh, we didn't have block scheduling. There were 30 or 40 kids in a class, and things were pretty much, uh, I wouldn't say strict, but uh, very business-like. And uh, it was good, though. I mean, it was good. Every classroom was filled. Uh, the round building had every, you know, classrooms. We didn't have computer labs. We didn't have art rooms. We didn't have any of that stuff. So it's, it's a, it was quite different than it was, uh, than it is today. Thank you so much. You're welcome. That was, that was painless, I hope.
How did you like Pats when you first came here? I loved it. I fit right in. I mean, for me, it was great. It was great. I was here as much as I could. I was here uh, a lot more than I than I could have been, right? I mean, so I, I came here on the weekends, and there were some of those men, those Christian brothers, they were incredibly influential to me. So, I mean, uh, Brother Jude, um, Brother Ralph, um, Brother Edward Fallon, and then Brother David Galinsky was my favorite teacher here. I mean, he taught him for uh, religion, and he had In Search of Meaning and Love and Marriage back then, and it was great to go somewhere and actually just talk. And we just talked as a group about, you know, different things and policies and how people felt about the moral issues. And um, it was great. I mean, the Christian brothers made me who I am today, for sure. Thank you so much, Coach. All right, well, good luck, boys. Um, how did you like Pats when you first came here? Loved it. And uh, this was the place to be at, for sure. Uh, I knew it when I walked in the door. And was, you know, welcomed by everybody here, felt a part of the school, you know, right from the start. How do you want Pats to be like in the future? I want it to keep being a place where I think what separates St. Pat's from a lot of schools is that uh, I think our guys genuinely love coming to school every day. And uh, I think when they're graduating, it's kind of a bittersweet moment where they're um, excited to go on to the next chapter but really not in a hurry to, they're sorry that they're leaving the brotherhood here. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. Good job. I got my driver's license last week Just like we always talked about Cause you were so excited for me To finally drive up to your house But today I drove through the suburbs Crying cause you weren't around And you're probably with that blonde girl Who always made me doubt She's so much older than me She's everything I'm insecure about Yet today I drove through the suburbs 